Hi everyone, welcome to the Stitch Sessions. It's super sunny today on a beautiful spring day. And I just wanted to show you guys this week's project. It is the Faroese shawl. Now I've done a Faroese shawl shape in my Shawl We Crochet series. It was the December shawl, which we call the Angel Wings shawl. And I called it the Angel Wings because the Faroese shape is very unusual. It's not like a typical circle shape or even a crescent shape. It kind of combines those two ideas together to create like these little wings that will drape over your shoulder here. So if I hold that up, you can see that it kind of shapes up and then shapes down again. And the special thing about the Faroese shawl is that it is designed in such a way so that it really sits nicely on your shoulders so that it doesn't slide off and uh, it inadvertently kind of creates this little v-neck line which is nice too. So I really love it for this feature and it's really practical and I will actually also leave a link to a video that I found on the history of the Faroese shawl and uh, I'll put uh, her handle up here. She did a great job of explaining the history of how the Faroese shawl came to be and, and how the design took shape. So I think you'll find it super interesting. Now I did keep this very simple, just like I did with the angel wing shawl in terms of, I just used a double crochet stitch. So if you're a little newer, uh, we're not doing any fancy stitches, but that way it'll give us more opportunities to just focus on how to create the shape of the Faroese design. And um, you'll notice that I have a bit of two-tone here. I'll talk about that later on at the end of the video. But the goal was to do it all one color, but this was a happy accident. And so it just looks really nicely there with that kind of two-tone effect. So I say without further ado, let's let's get into it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna just talk about the materials you'll need to gather to create your shawl, and then we will get right into it and start stitching it up. Okay, so for this project, I am using the Snuggly Wuggly yarn. And just in case you're wondering, because a lot of times I get asked, the color I am using is called Cool Baby. Sorry guys, I've had to adjust the um, audio here because for some strange reason, the rest of this clip was recorded in slow motion. So there's basically no voice. It sounds like some monster. So, so what I've gone ahead and done is I've actually sped up the video portion, but I'm just going to put in this voiceover on top. So we are using the Cool Baby Color for this yarn. It is a lightweight number three. And um, the hook size I'm gonna be using here is a five millimeter hook, which is also known as an H or a size nine. It is slightly larger than the recommended hook size, but I tend to do that as many of you know, uh, just so that my stitches lay nice and relaxed. And as always, just make sure that you have a pair of scissors and a yarn needle on hand to weave in your ends. So let's get to it. Okay, now before I get you started, I just wanted to give you a general layout of how the shawl is going to work. So I've already gotten started here, but I'm gonna start you from the beginning. Okay, you guys will not believe this, but this second clip also, for some reason, I must have accidentally pressed slow-mo. I'm not sure what's going on here, but here I am. I'm gonna do my best to um, just show you, or hopefully I remember what I wanted to explain to you guys about this shape here. So basically, we are starting in the center with actually a set of chains. And so we start with the spine and then we work our way with rows. So essentially you have the spine that runs down the center and you have a crescent shape on either side of that spine. So if you think of it in terms of those three shapes, the spine is straight, so the number of stitches stays the same, but the crescent shape on either side of that spine will increase its stitches to initially start creating that curvature. So we do that for quite a while 
before then we start to shape the top part of the wing portion. So I just wanted to delineate the spine by um, using a little chain space just so that it was nice and obvious. This is going to be kept super simple to show off the classic, typical Faroese design. Okay, so we're gonna begin by placing a slip knot onto our hook. And we're gonna start off by chaining 23. Okay, so once you have your 23 chains, we're going to begin row number one. So what we want to do is we want to find the fourth chain from the hook. Now remember, we never count the loop that's on the hook. So we're going to count one, two, three, and four. So there's the fourth chain right there. Into that chain, we are going to place two double crochet stitches. So a yarn over, insert, there's one, and there is two. So those three chains that we skipped over, those are gonna count as a double crochet. So it's, it's created just like a little shell stitch there. Next, what we're gonna do is we are gonna chain one. Then we are gonna go into each of the next 18 stitches and we are gonna place one double crochet into each stitch. So just one into each chain. And once you get 18 double crochets, you should have one stitch left on your chain. Okay, so I've got 18 double crochets and I've got one stitch left. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna chain one and into that last stitch, we're gonna place three double crochet stitches. So essentially you're just placing a shell into that last stitch there. So we've got two and then we've got three and that stitch is gonna stretch out a little bit and that is okay. Okay, so row one is complete and this is the row that I call, I always call the establishing row. So you'll notice here on the ends that our row is starting to bend down a little bit. That's exactly what we're going for because these sides here are what are gonna give us actually our wing type of shape. So this is a shell. Sometimes you'll hear this being called like a triple increase. So generally when we place two stitches into one stitch, that's called an increase. And so in this case, we're gonna be placing a shell stitch or a triple increase into the last and, and first stitch of each row. So, and that's done purposely to increase the number of stitches and also help to shape our garment. So this is a row number one. So now we're gonna go on to row number two. So for row number two, you will chain three, one, two, and three, and you're going to turn your work. And now into that very first stitch, that chain three will always count as a double crochet stitch. Into that very first stitch, you are going to place two double crochet stitches. So we always wanna have three stitches at the beginning and end of our rows. So then, there we go. So now we've got three double crochets at the beginning of our row. So now for the rest of this little section here, which I'm gonna always refer to as the wings portion of the shawl, we're going to always use the basic principles of crocheting a circle or any rounded shape. So we've already done our initial increase in the first row, and then we did our triple increase at the beginning. So now for this second row, anytime we're working in the winged area here, we're going to place an increase into each stitch that is not our first stitch. So the next stitch right here, will get two double crochets. So we are definitely increasing the number of stitches. So there's one increase. I've got one stitch left here and there is the second increase. 
So the chain one really helps us to shape that side, but it also helps to delineate where the spine of our shawl is and where our wings begin. So from here on out, anytime we are finished a wing portion or we're just about to go into the wing portion, we will now always chain two. So we have one and two, and now we're gonna work along our spine and we're just gonna work one double crochet stitch into every stitch all the way across. Okay, so I finished my 18 stitches. Remember your spine will always have 18 stitches. And now we're coming up to the other wings. So we're going to chain two, one and two. And so remember we're placing one increase into each stitch here before we get to the last stitch. Now this one is a chain three, so we'll be working into the top there. But into these next two stitches, we're gonna place two double crochets. So we have one and two, that's our first increase. And then we have one and two, and that's our second increase. And now we have our last stitch here, which is technically the chain three. And this is where we're gonna place our triple increase, or also known as our shell stitch. So you're gonna find the top of that chain three, so it's right about there. And you are going to place three double crochets here. So we have one. Two. And we have three. Okay, just like that. So now you can really see that it's starting to curve out a bit. Now, anytime you work into the top of a chain three, sometimes you're gonna get a little bit of that dip there. So I wouldn't worry too much about it. If you're not really super happy with that look, there always is an option to place a border around, which will get rid of that, okay? So now when I put my work down, I'm finished row number two. So you can see now a little bit more where the wings are definitely coming out. Now, this is actually gonna be worn this way. So actually, if I show you this way. So we are building the wings up this way. So that's why you've got these increases on each side. So let's take you into row number three. Okay, so for row number three, you're gonna chain three again. One, two, and three. You're gonna turn your work and we always go back and place two double crochets in there to add to our chain three, which counts as a double crochet. So there we go, get that out of the way right away. So now we did an increase into every stitch, the previous row. In the next row, we're going to do an increase in every other stitch. So if you've ever crocheted circles, for those of you that are a little newer, with every row or every round, we increase the number of stitches between your increase, so to speak. Um, and so that is how you will then continue to build the length of your shawl. So in the next stitch, we're only gonna place one double crochet. So that's on its own. And now we're gonna place an increase. So we place two double crochets. Okay, so we've still got a few stitches left in our wings, so we now place only one. And in the next one, we place two. And we've still got a couple stitches left, so in the next one, we place one. One double crochet there. We've got one stitch left and we place two. So the pattern repeat for round number three on the wings is two, one, two, one, two, one. There you go. Now you can really see that it's taking shape. Okay. And so then we're going to chain two, one and two. And then you know what to do. We're going into the spine. We're going to place just one double crochet into each stitch making sure we always have our 18 stitches. Now I'm gonna, I will meet up with you on the other side. Just remember that your wings are mirrors of each other, 
Okay, so in this case, we started with our triple increase and we ended with a regular increase. Once we get to this side, remember the triple is always on the end. So we will begin with the regular increase with two stitches. So we have two, one, two, one, two, one, and then the last one will be a triple, okay? And so as you continue to grow, whatever you do on one side, however you ended, that is how you will begin and vice versa. So again, I'm gonna meet uh, you back up here just to reiterate that on the other wing. Okay, so I've come across the spine here. Now I'm ready to do my next wing. So I'm gonna chain two. And then I'm gonna begin with an increase because remember we ended this wing with an increase so we have to begin the next one with an increase. So we're gonna place two double crochets into the first stitch. And now we're gonna repeat two, one, two, one until we have one stitch left. So the next stitch is only gonna get one. Then two. Then we have one, we have two, and we have one. And then we have the chain three here. So the top of this chain three, you're gonna place your triple increase, which is also known as your shell stitch. So we have three double crochets at the end. So there's the second one, and there is the third one, okay? Just like that. So again, on this side, you can see it's really starting to take shape. And slowly, you're gonna start to see, so if I put this, actually, let me put it up this way, because this is essentially how we're working it. Slowly, you're gonna see that the tips of the wings here are gonna start to curve up. That's exactly what we want. So at the end of round number three, your wings each have 12 stitches. So 12 on this side, 12 on this side. Your spine will always remain constant. So in round two, your wing only had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you increased by five stitches here, okay? So I'm gonna take you through one more row, row number four, just so you can kind of get used to what happens here with the increases. The increases will get spread out by more stitches in between them as you progress or as you increase the number of rows you work on, okay? The, the center or the spine will stay the same. So let's start row number four and I'll show you what I mean. So for row number four, we're gonna chain three again. We're gonna turn our work, and as always, we are going to place two more double crochets into that first stitch. Okay, so there's our triple increase. And now we're gonna place one double crochet into the next stitch. And then we go into the next stitch and place one double crochet. So now we have two stitches without an increase, okay? Into the next stitch, we are gonna place our increase, our regular increase. So we have two in there, okay? And now into each of the next two stitches, we're gonna repeat what we did back here. We're simply gonna place one double crochet and then one double crochet, okay? Next stitch is gonna be an increase, which means we're gonna place two double crochets. Okay, and into the next two stitches, one double crochet each. Okay, then we have two. Okay, and then we have two stitches left, and guess what? One into each stitch. So in this row, we did not end with an increase, okay? 
So that's why I want to take you through this because it doesn't necessarily mean that the, you're always going to end the wing on an increase. Okay. So now we have a total of 17 stitches along this wing. So you can tell that we are increasing the number of stitches in each row by five. Okay. So we started with our triple crochet and then our repeat was one, one, two, one, one, two, one, one, two, one, one. Okay. Now we're at the corner of our spine. So we're just going to chain two and then start working one double crochet into each stitch as usual. Okay. So I'm going to leave you to do that, but I'm just going to remind you. So we ended with no increase here. So what we're going to do is we're going to begin with no increase here. Remember that they are mirrors of each other. So on this side, I'm going to start with one, one, two. That's where our increase would be. One, one, two, one, one, two, one, one. And then there's our chain three. And that's where we would place our triple crochet. So from here on out, you're basically going to keep repeating this method until you reach row 19. Okay. So from the beginning up until row 19, you're always going to keep consistent stitches in your spine. Your wings will continue to increase. So for row four, we had uh, two stitches here with this, uh, with, with a double crochet in each. In row five, you're then going to have three stitches in between your increase. So it would be two, one, 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 two, one, 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 or, or one, two, three, then two, one, two, three. The next row up would be two, one, two, three, four. The next row up would be two, meaning your increase, one, two, three, four, five. So you can see that you're increasing the number of stitches in between all of those increases. And as always, the very first stitch and the very last stitch will get the triple increase. And another good way to remember it is that your wings are always going to increase by five stitches with every row that you build. So that's it for the first portion. That's where we're kind of building up the arc of our wings. Once you finish 19 rows, meet me back here and then I'll take you through how we're going to begin to shape the curves of our wings. So you're going to keep doing this until row 19. Okay, guys, so I have actually done a few extra rows beyond row 19 because I got excited and I forgot that I had to film this for you guys. So I have actually, so my row 19 is right here. I just put a little marker here. So I just went a few, started thinking about how I was going to shape it. So at the, the end of row 19, I will now have 18 double crochets in between all of my increases. So you can see there, there's the triple, two, three. And then these are all individual double crochets until I reach my first increase there. See that? So that's what I was saying earlier. Each row is going to increase the number of stitches in between. <laughs> I, I know I'm using the word increase a lot. You're going to increase the number of stitches in between each of your increased stitches. Boy, that is a tongue twister. Okay, and then you have another set of 18, and then there's your next increase, okay? So we've accomplished kind of creating the arc of the, the wings or the way they're going to span out. So it's hard to fit it into the, the frame here. Let me just see. There we go. Okay, so you can now see that the spine is quite definable, and in reality, your shawl would sit like this and then it would come over your shoulders. And the beautiful thing is, this is what helps the shawl sit beautifully over your shoulders, okay? And a good thing to do once you hit um, row 19 is actually drape it over your shoulders. It should start to kind of want to curl over your shoulders at this point, okay? At the at ends of your shoulders. And so that's why row 19, if you do 20 rows, that's also a good number too. Okay, so now, what we're going to do, and you can see that I've kind of started it already. 
we're, we don't want our wings to curl in anymore. We now want it to round out and give it a nice little arch outward and even out. So if I pull this closer here, see, you can see here that it stopped curving this way and it straightened out a wee bit. So for row number 20, which is the next row here, we are gonna do one whole row of just one double crochet into every single stitch. So row 20 has no increases whatsoever. We're not even going to do the triple increase at the beginning, okay? As you can see there. So you are going to do that for row number 20. Once you've completed row number 20, we're gonna move on to row number 21. And this is where we will start to increase again. And you can see there's an increase right there. And so the last time we did an increase, we had 18 stitches in between each of the doubles there. And we're gonna continue from there. So now in row 21, you will place 19 double crochets and then an increase. And then you would do that all the way around the span of your wing. Remember, it's only the wing where we're doing increases. Then you do your regular, and then you do 19 stitches, increase, 19 stitches, increase, etc., etc., etc. No increases at the end though. That's the big difference. That triple increase is what helped us really curl. We don't wanna do that anymore. So no more triple increases. And I do wanna remind you, however many stitches you end with at the end is what you're gonna begin with. So here in this case, row number 21, see I have an increase and then I had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine stitches. It's just whatever the number was left, that's what you do. So we have nine stitches here. So what does that mean? When we start on this side, after we do our spine, we will begin with those nine stitches. See that? Nine stitches there. And then there's our increase. And then we go on to our 19 increase, 19 increase. I hope that makes sense. So because I had nine stitches left over, on that side, I start with nine stitches. Sorry if for those of you that feel like I'm repeating a lot. I just want to make sure those of you that are a little newer get the concept because it is really easy once you get the concept, okay? And so that is what you're gonna do. So row 20, no increases at all. Row 21, we are gonna do increases in every 19th stitch. And then row 22, which is where I ended off here, we will then begin with a couple of decreases. So what I want you to do is I want you to press pause, do row 20 and 21, and then come back and I'll just talk you through row number 22 and then I'll explain the rest of the repeat for the length of your shawl, okay? So for row number 23, you will chain three as usual. You'll turn your work and what you're gonna do is you are going to decrease the next two stitches together. So the chain three is the same. You're not gonna work into this stitch, you're gonna work into these two right here. You're going to start like a regular double crochet, pull through two, but do not resolve that stitch. You're now gonna yarn over, go into the next stitch, pull through two, and now you've got two stitches that are unresolved. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna yarn over and pull through all three stitches. So now what we've done is we've stitched these two together and see how that's kind of forcing that chain three to kind of bend. That's exactly what we want, okay? So you're gonna chain three, you're gonna decrease the first two stitches here, and then you are going to just continue on and you are going to place one double crochet into each stitch in this case, it's going to be 20 stitches. Yeah, you're going to do 20 double crochets. And then in the 21st stitch, you are going to place an increase. See that there? That's an increase. Then you do 20 stitches, you will place an increase right there. 20 stitches, you will place an increase. And you'll keep going until you get to your spine. And I'm just trying to see here. 
there we go. There's the last increase. And then we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this time we had seven left over. You know what to do. On this side, you start with seven. You do an increase and then you do 20. Increase 20. Increase 20. And then once you get to the other end of your other wing, when you have three stitches left, what you want to do is you want to stitch the two, the last two together before the final stitch, okay? So you would get here and you would do that two together stitch and then you would do a double crochet into the very last stitch. That will complete row number 23. So finish that off, come back, and then I'll go over with you the general repeat for the rest of your shawl. So you're just about completing row number 22. Sorry if I've been saying row 23, I got a bit mixed up there. So I've got three stitches left. You might not have the full 20 stitches. Sometimes that happens, don't worry about it. As long as you have three stitches left, you know you wanna decrease these two here. So we're going to begin like a double crochet, but then we go into the next one. and we pull through both. So we've decreased these two stitches into one. We have the top of our chain three here, and now we're just simply gonna place one double crochet into that stitch. Okay, so there is row number 22 complete. And now for row number 23, we are gonna do a row of no increases. So as always, chain three. One, two, three. Turn your work. And all you're gonna do on each wing is just place one stitch into each all the way there. Go across your spine and do the same thing all the way. Row number 24, you are going to repeat what you just did in row number 22. So you will chain your three, but then you do a decrease, and then you do your increases in the appropriate spot. So at that point, we're gonna be doing 21 stitches in between each increase, etc., etc. So you're gonna keep repeating this until you hit row 30, okay? So meaning you'll do one row of no increases at all, and then the following row you're gonna do increases, but you will begin and end each row with that first little decrease there. So a decrease is gonna help us curve in a little bit, okay? So basically the odd numbered rows from now on until row 30, so this is gonna be row number 23, no increases. All the even numbered rows, so basically row 24, 26, 28, and 30, will begin with that little decrease in those second and third stitches and then you continue your increases as usual, okay? So the basic principles of crocheting a circle fall into play here. Um, and if you have any issues kind of figuring out the math, just reference my how to crochet a circle tutorial. Um, and of course, I'll leave a link for that in the description box down below. So our shawl is growing and the shape is really starting to take form here. So you've got lots to do now. I'm gonna meet you back here once you finish row number 30. Okay guys, so I have reached row 30. So you can see how it's curved up and how now my little wings have really formed and shaped over. So what I'm gonna do now is I wanna create some more length. So just to show you guys, so this is what happens. So once you wear it, see how that curve will come nicely around the neck? And this is what makes these shawls so great for not slipping off of your shoulders there, okay? And then you can kind of just meet it there if you want. And so now I feel like the shape has been formed enough. So now all I wanna do is just continue creating the length that I need. So when I try it on myself, it, it just comes to just above my elbow area. So I definitely wanna create a little bit more length. So we're not gonna do any more decreasing right now. We're just gonna go back to alternating rows of no increases and increases. 
So this was row number 30 complete. And so you can see here, I had just done that decrease at the end. So this row 31, as usual, all the odd number rows have no increases in it. So when I get to row 32, uh, I'm going to add my increases, but I'm not going to do anything at the ends now for a little while. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply place one stitch into the last stitch. So I'm going to start row 31 here at the moment. Okay. So I'm just going to start as usual. I'm going to chain three. One, two, and three. I'm going to turn my work. And we're just simply going to continue as usual, placing one double crochet into each stitch. Nice and easy. So then I go into the next stitch, etc., etc. Yeah. So when we did the decreases, that's what created that rounded shape, as I showed you earlier. And instead of continuing to decrease, we're now just going to straighten it out for a little bit. And I'm going to use this opportunity to now just create the length that I would like. So in row 30, I was doing increases into every 25th row, uh, stitch. Okay. So again, as you increase the number of rows, the number of stitches between the increases will increase. Oh yeah, yeah. That's a that's a lot of the use of the word increase. So hopefully that makes sense. And of course, is usually once you get to your spine, you just do your chains, your regular stitches and chain. So now we're just all about creating length, alternating between increase and no increase rows. Okay, guys, I will see you back here once I've got the length that I am happy with. And here it is, the finished product. You can see how lovely it lays right over the shoulders and you're going to notice you might notice a slight li little color change there and guess what i ran out of this yarn and the dye lot no longer exists so i walked up and down the aisles trying to find just the right shade and this was the best i could find it's not, you can see it's a little bit and probably doesn't pick up on camera as much, but this has a little bit more of a green tinge to it. And this one has just a touch more of that baby blue with the teal. Even though teal has some greens in it, you can still see if I pull back, you can definitely see that there's a slight difference, but you know what? I think it works out great because it looks like I did it purposely on a gradient. So, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not too upset about it. And so that's how it came out. Now this does come to about my waist. So obviously this, um, this mannequin is a lot slimmer than I am, but I just wanted to turn it around there so you can see how it falls on the back. It's just lovely. And I just wanna show you how the spine design falls on the back. And this is just kind of a great way where you can delineate as you're crocheting just sitting a little bit crooked here um, where your main spine sits and then you can flare out the sides from there and uh, and that's it that's so that is the main Pharaoh Wheezy shape and I this is why I wanted to keep it super simple again with basic stitches like double crochet and I think with this lighter weight yarn than the one I did with the angel wings shawl. I just think that the it was a little bit bulkier and I did not extend the wings as much. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this off and I'm gonna spread it out here and then I can show you the full effect here. Okay, so I've just laid it down here. I'm really sorry about the shadows, guys. It's really sunny in here and that's why I wanted to film in here. It's the brightest uh, room in the house. So unfortunately, the afternoon sun is setting, but I hope you can get the basic gist. Later, I'll take some still photos once the sun's gone down a little bit and I'll post it here as well. But I want you to just see that where that dip goes up and the arc of that little wing, I call it, flows out to the side. And we did that using the um, kind of crescent shaped technique. So you've got the wings on the side and then you've got the spine that comes down the center. So when we fold it down, 
it kind of naturally will form its own little V neckline, as you saw when it was on the mannequin. And I've got some pins here because I'm actually also starting to work on the written pattern. So I just wanted to remind myself of where I did some, some changes. So look out for that, which will be coming out soon. I don't know when, but soon. You know, I'm just trying to keep up with all of this uh, crazy fun stuff. But anyway, so you can see just how lovely that this has turned out. Keeping it simple, a beautiful design, perfect for spring. So I hope that you found this really fun to work on and something new and different in terms of shape for your shawls. So if you have any questions at all, like if something's come along and you are not quite certain, just remember, leave it for me in the comment box down below. And as always, you can always reach me directly. So you can email me at info at crochetcrafty.com. And I'm super happy to uh, answer any of your questions as best as I can. And as always, don't forget to come and visit me on the Crochet Crafty website. There are lots of resources and tools for you to help you with any of your crochet projects, along with lots of free written patterns. And if you sign up for my newsletter, you'll always be the first one to find out when I'm releasing a brand new pattern. And of course, you can always visit me on the Etsy shop as well. And all of that information is on the Crochet Crafty website. Now, don't forget, you can also come just say hi to me on Facebook and Instagram at The Stitch Sessions. And don't forget to tag me in your designs. Like when you make this one, I want to see what color you used. I want to see if maybe you decided to use more than one color. I think that would look super, super pretty. So please do share. And I know a lot of our community loves to see what everybody else is doing. So that's it for me today. So I hope you have a wonderful day. Happy crocheting as always. Remember to take really good care of yourselves. And I will see you guys in next week's session. Bye-bye.